Alright, as you can see here, I've gone through a little bit more detail, adding a gradient fill to the walls to give it that extra effect. And if you've seen Theory's other tutorials, you'll know how to make gradients. Just uh, these fills up here, change that to linear, change your colors, etc, etc. There you go, you've got fancy gradients. Okay, so now I'm going to do here is I'm going to take away all these blue lines by double clicking and pressing delete. Alright, good. That just makes it look more real, getting all those blue lines out of there, kind of a little bit distracting. You wouldn't normally find blue lines all over the place in real life, so why haven't your animation? Okay, so now from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding even more detail to this again. You don't have to, this is actually looking pretty good right now, so if you want to leave it at that, that's fine, but I'm going to add some more. Let's put a little texture on this wood here. I'm being sloppy. Alright, and then just kind of fill that with darkened alpha and to make these sort of effects you might want to do it on a layer that's uh, above what you've already made just to make it easier for you and then merge it all on the symbol afterwards because then you can just move the whole background like it's one later on okay so again I'm gonna keep adding details maybe put some uh, buttons on here and a couple of words in the signs you know that sort of thing this sign up here is blank so I'm gonna put some more detail let's see what I did Oh, all right, not too bad. Valero here. Oh, no smoking sign. That's pretty good. Okay, and again, just sort of the same thing I was doing, just adding detail to the wood. Yep, looks really good. So now I'm going to continue with the next step in the detail process, which is lighting. And now lighting can be a little bit tricky at times. Lighting, you don't want to include this point perspective here. You want to think about where you're going to have the light source, which I'm going to have a few right up here and you're going to want to draw it in relation to that. So probably for this door frame for example I'm going to have the light coming down so it's going to kind of cast a shadow right about here. You just draw space, fill it in, delete the lines, delete the lines, oh, well anyway, uh, there will be a nice little shadow right here when I go to the next frame. There we go, good. There's a shadow right there. I've got a shadow on the table right here. Looks pretty good. And what I've done with these lights is basically what I've done is I've used the point perspective to draw the tiles on the ceiling. I've filled them in with different colors. And then I've filled a couple of colors just or a couple of squares in with just white to show that there's light there. And then I've basically taken a semicircle, made it into a symbol, put a little bit of blur on it, made it look like a little light glow, as well as put a little bit of glow down here. And there you have it. A beautiful hotel hallway in a lobby or anywhere else and all perfectly set up for some great animation to be put on top of it. Now of course uh, this sort of style of backgrounds doesn't have to be just for indoors. I'll show you another background I made. This one's from Whiteout. As you can see here, it's a nice woodland background, lots of trees, lots of, uh, lots of landscape right here. But I still use that same method of the point perspective. And if I was going to point put the point perspective on here, I'd probably put it right about there. As you can see, the uh, these poles on the side, they sort of direct to there, direct to the center. The truck directs to the center. And that's just a bunch of details put on top of it. How I made the trees. Uh, they're all really there's only one tree that I made and I just uh, copy and pasted the symbol because I didn't really feel like drawing tons of trees for just one quick scene and the mountains in the background again just drew some quick mountains there put a little bit of shadow on it and then for the filter that is a drop shadow coming straight down this white just to make them look snow capped gradient for the sky and a nice woodland backdrop results perfect okay the next back I'm going to show from free run. Okay, a little bit more simple this time as you can see. This is again because I knew I was going to have lots of animation on it so I didn't want to go overboard. 
But the one thing that's different about this background is that instead of there only being one point perspective, even though I use the same technique, there is two. As you can see when you look back, there's two different point perspectives, just judging from here, there's one, all the buildings are sort of coming towards that point right here, but then over here, the buildings sort of conjugate to this point right here, and they're all separated by this centerpiece. So it shows that you can have all the point perspectives you want just uh, based on uh, what sort of structures you want to make and such, but uh, two is about the limit that I go to for detail because after that it kind of becomes confusing. Well. There you have it. Uh, on behalf of the Pew Pew Clan tutorial page, this is Supernova. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment below or in the clan page. Uh, if you have any other tutorial requests for me and or theory, just uh, same thing, drop us a comment at the clan page. Subscribe, do all that crazy stuff that you YouTubers always like to do. And I'll talk to you guys later.